Make sure to join my new Discord server to talk with me, fans, and friends. Plus, you will be notified so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be making a GFX tutorial, except this time I'm going to make it nice and slow so you guys can easily follow along. If you're lucky enough to own two devices, this tutorial would be easiest if you put this up on a phone or something while you make your GFX on your computer or laptop. But otherwise, if you can't do that, you can just switch between the tabs and you should be good to go. So I'm going to start by opening up Roblox Studio, just as the classic bass player. Then I'm going to go out to plugins and I'm going to go to load character. Now, if you guys do not have all these plugins or Blender or anything else, please go and watch my very beginning GFX tutorial because that will show you guys how to get those downloads as well. But for now, we're just gonna be using this load character. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in my username, my Roblox character. That is not me, I don't know why this is showing up. Make sure you have spawn origin ticked. You don't want it like this, make sure it's like this. And then you're gonna click spawn R6. You can click F to kind of zoom into your character and then this should be loaded in. I don't know why but mine's kind of like stuck in the ground a bit so I'm just going to bring it up. Now that we have our character we can go over to it in the explorer on the side, right click, export selection and then you can save this to your desktop somewhere. I previously made an OBJ's folder where I can save my things so that's just what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to find a room model. I already have a bunch of models saved, so I'll probably use one of them. But you can find really nice models by just searching for aesthetic room and a bunch of cute room models will come up. I found this really cute like bedroom thing with a cat and a couch. So I'm going to choose to export this. To do that, I'm just going to go back up to Explorer, right click, export selection, and then save it just like we did before with the character. If you wanted to export any extra like props or anything, this would be the time, but I'm not going to so I can quit off my Roblox Studio. Next we're going to go to Blender. So I'm going to be using Blender 2.79. This is my favourite Blender to use because I've just always used it, but feel free to use any other Blender types, most of them work the same. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my rig. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and then find my default blend. Once again, if you guys do not have the rig download, make sure you go and watch my very beginning tutorial where it'll teach you how to download it and everything. Okay, so obviously our rig is very grey right now and we need to add our character's texture to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go across over here to these little icons, click on the circle, just add a new layer and then go new, scroll down to colour and click on this little dot that's like next to the gray color. Then you're gonna click on image texture. Now to add the image texture, go to open and then find your texture file, which would be where you saved your OBJ just before. And then just open up that texture. It's now open on the torso. Now we're just gonna have to do it to the rest of the body parts. So to do that, just keep on clicking image texture and then finding your OBJ. Just like that. Now your rig will have its texture on it. Now we're gonna go up to file, import, wavefront, and we're gonna import our character again. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna just delete everything except for the head. Because obviously we don't have the head on here, so. Also, if you want to keep any extra accessories, like how mine's got a backpack or like the necklace or anything, um, just keep them as well. To delete things, just click delete. X and then delete to enter. Okay, so now that we have this, to make it even easier to move later on, I'm going to join parts of the head together. So I'm going to select this, then hold shift and you can just select the rest of these. Make sure you're holding shift, otherwise they won't be stuck together. And then you're going to go over to the left hand side and click join. Then you can click set origin, origin to geometry, and 
there you go the head will be super easy to move and it's all stuck together as one okay so we basically have our character now it's time to import the background to open up your background model we're going to go back up to file import wavefront and then click on your room model and it will slowly import now the background is like really far away i don't know if you guys can see that but we're going to go to set origin and then origin to geometry that way it's going to just like connect the arrows to it and it'll be easier to move it you can use these arrows to just move the background around or you can go down here and click the rotating tool and this will rotate your background as well so just have some fun with the tools and move everything around until you like it i'm pretty happy with where my background's been positioned so now what we can do is we can start to pose our character to do that you're going to click on the rig go down to object mode and change it to pose mode now you will be able to move the body parts like so remember to use shift if you want to select multiple body parts at once and then just move everything around by the way if you want to move around the entire place you can go to shift f and then use your arrow keys on your keyboard and you'll be able to move around so to do that remember shift and then f and then you can either use WASD or just the arrow keys and you'll be able to do this. A little tip for when posing your character, try and move around as many limbs as you can. That way the person's gonna look way more realistic if that's the look you're going for. If you're not going for that look, don't do it, but just a little tip anyways. I'm just gonna go for like a simple waving sort of pose. To move your character all as one, just go down to object mode and then you'll be able to move it as like a big group of things. Right now I'm going to use shift and F to just kind of get up closer to my character so I can like see it better while I'm posing it. I really like my pose now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add and then camera. Once you've added your camera, go down to view and then camera. Then use shift and F once again to just move your camera around. This is where like the render is going to go. So I suggest fitting your entire person in the frame. Um, I think I might actually make my camera a square. So I'm going to go over to this camera. Go down to resolution and you can change the size of your camera here. So I'm going to do a thousand by a thousand which obviously makes a square <laughs> and then just kind of angle it the way that I want sorry cat but I don't actually want you in here to check what it's gonna look like when it's finished you can go down to this little icon here and you can go to rendered so if we rendered it right now this is what it would look like it's super dark so we need to do something about this what we're gonna do is just go back down to material change it back and then we're going to go to add, lamp, and hemi. You can choose whatever lighting you want. I like to use either hemi or sun. They're not too much different, but if you guys want to learn more about the lighting, you can check out my lighting video. Then this is our light here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the arrows to sort of move it around. And then I'm going to rotate it so it's shining onto my person. Just like this. I want it to kind of come from the right hand side so that's where I'm gonna put it and angle it this looks really good so I'm gonna go back to view and go to my camera let's check what it looks like when it's rendered now this looks better but I don't really like the way that the lighting's looking so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the light icon here and what you can do is you can change the strength so this will change how bright it is and then you can also change the color so if you want pink lighting green lighting blue lighting just fiddle around with it until you're happy with what it looks like okay this is looking pretty good but a tip from me is i like to go to this little world icon and click ambient occlusion now this just kind of gets rid of some of the harsh shadows but as you can see this lighting is way too bright so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to factor and i'm just going to drag it down so that the lighting isn't so harsh but also so that the shadows are still showing 
Then I'm just gonna bring down some of the lighting on this part too. I'm really happy with the way that my lighting's looking now and I feel like I'm pretty much done. But there's a couple more steps we have to do before we render it. So first of all, we're gonna go over to this little icon here. It's next to the camera. And then go down to denoising. That's gonna make your file super good quality when it renders and there's gonna be no grain involved. Also, as you can see, my room model has like a couple of windows and you can see gray through them, which I don't want. So I'm gonna scroll down on the camera icon to the bottom and I'm gonna click transparent. This is gonna make your GFX a PNG and if you wanna do that, change the file to a PNG file and then change this part here to RGBA. Also, as you go, it is really important that you save your work. So go to File, Save As, and then I'm just gonna save it to my desktop as GFX. That way, if your Blender randomly quits off or anything, or you have any faults, your file will be saved and you can continue working on it. If you're like me and you're really picky with colors, if you wanna change the color of something, you can click on it. And then go to this little icon here. It's like a gradient sort of option. Go down to Surface and click Add Shader. Then you can change the texture or whatever you want. I'm gonna make this glossy. So it's gonna give it a glossy texture to this plant pot. And then you can change the color here. So I kinda want like a gold glossy pot. And you can also change the amount of glossiness that you want. Just like that. And say like this picture frame here, if you don't want it to have any texture but you want to change the color, just go to add shader and then diffuse BSDF. And then you can just change the color of that as well. I'm gonna add a couple more textures. So I'm gonna add some gloss to these light bulbs. And I'm gonna add some glass to these ones as well. Check how it looks when it's rendered once again. This is basically what your final GFX is gonna look like. So I suggest checking what it looks like when it's rendered to make sure you're happy. Then go over to the camera icon and you can hit render. Make sure when you're rendering the resolution is at 100% so it's the best quality that it can be. Then just wait for it to render. Okay, so my GFX has finally finished rendering. This should take around 10 minutes, but it really depends on how big your file is. So once you're really happy with that, go down to image, save as image, and then just title it something and save it somewhere. So I'm just gonna title it Madzy GFX. And then your GFX will be finished. After a bit of editing and making a couple of changes, this is how my finished GFX turned out.